in the spirit of remembering him. We proceed forth this morning. Hebrews chapter 4. Only two or three verses. Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4, beginning at verse 14. Hebrews chapter 4, beginning at verse 14, and reading through verse 16. Um, it is on the screen. We don't have a new King James reading Bible and we're going to read these three verses together Hebrews chapter 4 beginning at verse 14 through verse 16 let's read together seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Verse 16 again. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the... One last time, verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Lord, these next few minutes, thank you for the leading and guiding and the revelation of the Spirit of God through your word to this house. Thank you for blessing us to be open to hear, to receive to apply what comes from you by your spirit through this vessel to us now. In Jesus' name. And all the people said, Amen. And Amen. I never get tired of thinking about the Lord Jesus. Never get tired of remembering him. Never get tired of thinking about him. I'm a little uneasy today because I'm instructed to share with you more of my own personal life. And I like my privacy. <laughs> but the Lord in First Timothy speaks of pastors and church leaders as being examples. Come on, and in keeping with that responsibility, there are times that the Lord instructs us to share, particularly 
what can be helpful. We live in two dimensions. And until, until we were born again, we only lived in one. Everybody on earth lives in this natural dimension. They live in this natural culture. But it was only when we were born again that we were actually birthed into the dimension of the kingdom of God. And that dimension is actually more real than this one because this realm owes its existence to that one. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, kingdom, consists of the king and his throne. We, having come up in a democracy, don't have the best cultural understanding of a monarchy. But there are cultures that have had monarchical rule and they understand kingdom from a cultural perspective more easily than we do. But we think that because sometimes we are in a democracy where everybody's vote counts, that we could vote in the kingdom. <laughs> the kingdom is not a democracy. It's a monarchy. It's ruled over by one supreme being. And the only way to enter into it is by recognition and acknowledgement of his lordship, of his rule. If you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart God has raised him from the dead. He didn't just rise from the dead to be savior, he rose as Lord. In this dimension from which we have eternal life, while we are physically in this natural order, we have the privilege of checking into headquarters of contacting home base, of getting directions, insights, and even intervention from that dimension into this. The kingdom of God is a throne-centered order. <laughs> Our salvation is a throne-centered operation. Our Savior came to us from the throne. He was sent from the throne. 
He came into our race and took on humanity without ever losing his divinity. And as such, he is the most unique person in existence. For the Father and the Holy Spirit are fully God, all God, with no humanity. Jesus, uniquely in the Godhead, is equally God and human. <laughs> he came in pre-incarnate form from the throne, paid our sin debt, rose from the dead, and went back to the throne. And we got to, or at least earth got to see him first in human form. When he left heaven, he was not in human form. When he returned, he brought back all of his divinity, and yet he also brought back his full humanity. And heaven got to see a man who was God. And he went back to the throne as fully God, fully man, and our great high priest. He, oh God, you know this is good. He left the throne representing God. He went back to the throne representing us. And when he came back to the throne as our representative, as our great high priest, yes, he did something at the throne that no priest on earth would ever dare to do. Every priest on earth in offering sacrifices had to always stand they could never sit. If he sat, he risked dying. The reason the priests on earth could never sit is because their offering could never remove sin. But when he went back to the throne with his blood, having removed our sin, in the presence of the great I am, as himself also God, he released his blood and then sat down on the throne. Listen, sat down on the throne representing us. <laughs> so that through us, he is still here, and through him, we're on the throne. Come on. Come on. <laughs> and he did something in going that had never happened before. There had always been people coming to God or praying to God. But unfettered, open access to the throne of God never happened until Jesus went back to it. Until that time, it was praying towards Jerusalem, praying towards the temple, praying in the tabernacle. Only with his return 
to the throne, do we actually now from earth have access to where God is seated? <laughs> and so the scripture says, since we have such a great high priest who's gone before us, let us now on the trail of his going in the way he has opened up behind the shed blood he has taken. Let us now come boldly while physically we are still on earth. Let us now come boldly through prayer to the very throne where God is sitting. Coming to God, coming to the throne. In chapter 11 of Hebrews is mentioned as a primary expression of faith. But without faith, Hebrews eleven six 6 says, it is impossible to please God. For he or she who comes to God. He's talking about faith, and yet he's talking about coming to God. And how we develop in kingdom life is unmistakably indicated by how we come to God. Now I have, I have, I have had a growing prayer life, a growing life of coming to God uh, from the time I got saved. And, and it's, it was easy for me because when I got saved, I was on my back paralyzed. So I had a whole lot of time to come to God. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I had three months in the hospital to just come to God. And so I learned early about what that was like. I learned early about how a part of me didn't particularly want to come. But I had nothing else to do. <laughs> so I was able to get habits formed early. But until recently, My day consisted largely of what I call time with God. I've got my time with God, and, and I've had time with God that has gone sometimes from an hour to two, sometimes three hours. But I always began my day with God, and I had time with God. And that's been good. That has served me well. And I thank God for it. And I would talk with God, as I'm sure you would do during the course of the day, along with any additional time with God. I know what it is to also, before I got that time established, I know what it is to, to not have time with God. And try to treat God like you just always understand I can talk to you on the run. <laughs> try building a relationship with anybody that you just talk to on the run. 
<laughs> that has served me well. I'm grateful for it. It's a foundation. It was only this, that there are times, and, I, and, I, and I, I'm sure this happens in your life too, that there are times in your journey in the kingdom where certain things are major markers. There's always continued progress, but certain things you're able to always look back on and say, this was a major shift. This was a major turn. And I have had, I have had time with God for 40 years. And it's been wonderful time. And my, my life has been shaped wonderfully by it. But about four months ago, I, I saw a pattern in my journey where I was stuck. Have you ever felt stuck? Yes. Like you just keep cycling at the same place and you can't seem to grow and get out of that place. And I said, Lord, I've been here for a long time and I am tired of being here. And I found myself along with my time with God. In the morning, I found myself coming back to God, spending more than just a few minutes after my time with God. And the Holy Spirit wonderfully reminded me of the pattern of prayer when Jesus was here and even in the early church. You know, I, I thought I was doing good when I had my time. But the early church and during the times of Jesus and even before that time in the Hebrew culture, there was prayer in the what's called the third hour, the sixth hour, and the ninth hour. This is a regular part of their culture going to God three times a day. And I used to read that and admire that and say, boy, that's great. That's wonderful. I just don't know if I could ever do that. <laughs> but I got so frustrated with where I was. I said, I got to grow. What I didn't realize, that my growth would first happen in how I came to God. See, I wanted to grow in the, in the journey without realizing I had to grow in the coming, to grow in the journey. And I found myself coming back to the Lord. And when I read that, I said, you know what? Let me, let me try this, because I'm so frustrated where I've been. God ain't the one who needs to change. Let me just start coming. And you all, it, it took, some, it took some, some struggling and some persistence. But in this last four months, I have come to learn the difference between building God around my day and building my day around coming to God. And for me, though I had wonderful, sometimes extensive time with God when I would have him in the early part of the day only, he was significant in my day, but much of my day was always in my mind bigger than, than God. I mean, I got things to do. I got responsibilities to keep. I've got 
meetings to have. I, I've got a day to live. <laughs> now, fashioning my day around coming to him. I realize I don't first have a day to live. I have a day to come. And I've come to realize that coming, I have needed his help in every segment between the coming. <laughs> and, and, and I've come to understand more about what Jesus said when he said, blessed are they who hunger and thirst. I didn't know coming more could awaken more hunger to come. I know it's satisfied, but it's also awakened more hunger. So that now my life has gotten to the point where I'm missing God more after having been with him only a short time ago. <laughs> Marilyn Hickey tells a story about Dr. Cho in Korea. And she's on the board, she was on the board of Church Growth International and uh, he called this meeting and these people are living all around the world and they flew over to Korea for this meeting and he was having the meeting with the board and then all of a sudden he left. He said, listen, I got to go. I'm being called to prayer. And he just left the board. <laughs> and she, <laughs> she said, I can't believe he called us all the way over here to have a few minutes and then leave us like that. And she said, the Holy Spirit said to her, he heard another voice <coughs> that called him to a familiar place. And he's learned how to put everything else down and come. And maybe the reason you think it's strange is because he's got the kind of ministry he has and you got the kind of ministry you have. Let me tell you where I'm sensing positive changes because you know what? It's not, it's not as much as I love the act of coming, what more impresses me is the results from coming. My hearing is keener. I'm feeling closer to God. Certain things that I tolerate, and I don't tolerate. The leading of the Holy Spirit is clearer to me. And I have spent more time in my spiritual language. Now, I don't know where you are when it comes to spiritual language or praying in the spirit or praying in tongues. I have been all over the place. So I have empathy with everybody. I have been at the place where I said, mm-mm, I don't need that. It's nothing but gibberish. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me. And you may be there. And I'll tell you, in this church, we'll never make it a litmus test for membership or leadership but I'd be less than a pastor if I don't explain to you 
all the benefits of what his coming has opened up. It wasn't until I actually experienced being filled with the Holy Spirit and the release of spiritual language that I realized why it didn't make sense to me before I experienced it. What I didn't realize before I experienced this is that I was trying to evaluate a super rational operation with the limits of a rational mind. God never said it didn't make sense to him. I said it didn't make sense to me. But when I read in the scripture, he that speaks in the tongue speaks to God. Well, they weren't talking to me anyway. <laughs> Well, I had been, I've been baptized in the Holy Spirit now for at least 25 years. I've had some experience and development in both praying in my natural language, praying in the Spirit. About four weeks ago, something happened. I, when I finished my PhD, the first time I did a student loan was at the PhD level. About $70,000. I was paying every month a little under $700. I have been praying for relief, some in the spirit, some in my own natural language. I just wasn't getting results. And I said, Lord, this is burdening me and my family. We can't can keep doing this. I've done some praying about this. Have you ever prayed about something and you didn't get the results you were looking for? I said, Lord, I know I prayed about this. We can't keep bearing this. Something has got to happen. And I believe it's because I was coming, I started coming more often to God. I said, Lord, I've studied spiritual language from the scriptures. I know I'm praying perfectly when I'm praying this. I said, from today, I'm not going to talk to you in English about this anymore. I'm not getting the results. I said, I may think about it in my mind, but I'm only going to speak about it in the spirit. And for two and a half weeks, I had my little card out about this one area, and I was praying in tongues over it. And there were times I got lost in the spirit praying over it. And there were times when my mind, listen, when you pray in the spirit and you pray for an extended period of time, your mind can get bored. You think, well, what are you, what are you doing? Because you're so used to filtering thoughts through your mind, the mind wants to sit in governance of everything you say. But when you're praying in the spirit, you're at a level the mind doesn't originate. It has to learn how to be quiet and flow with what's coming out of your spirit. And I remember two and a half weeks in to praying only in tongues over this. I felt like I was birthing something. I said, Lord, I've never been pregnant, but I feel like... 
where? You, 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 I may not be pregnant here, but I know what it is to be pregnant in here. Come on, somebody. Hey! And I felt like out of my spirit, something got birthed. I knew I had been praying only, at least by intent, only over this area. Well, about two days after that, feeling like in the spirit I had given birth to something. A week ago, it was a week ago last Friday, at 8 o'clock in the morning, I get this call, and I've got fed long in my phone, so I got them programmed with the, with the, with the title fed long. I get this call on my cell phone from fed long at 8 o'clock in the morning. And I said, well, I do need to talk to them about getting this loan adjusted. Do I pick it up or not? <laughs> but I felt the prompt to pick it up. So I answered the phone. And this little young boss on the other end, are you Mr. McPherson? And I wanted to say, it depends. <laughs> well, I said, yes, I am. She said, Mr. McPherson, your student loan is behind. And I wasn't aware of that. She said, to catch up your loan right now, it's going to take about $1,500. I said, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I just, I just listened. She said, uh, this is the case. Do you have that? I said, no, I'm not in a position to catch this up. And then she said, that's not why I called. She said, you're at the end of the arrangement you initially made to start paying this off, which was news to me. She asked me questions about our income, which they've asked before. I've answered before the same thing. But this time it was different. Not in the answer I gave her, but in the answer she gave me. She said, here's what I'm prepared to do. I want to start you on a new agreement which catches up every amount that's behind. So that today, without you paying anything, you are caught up on your payments. So, oh, it gets better than that. And she said, um, based on what you just told me, I said, well, that's what I've been telling them every time they call, thinking to myself. <laughs> she said, I want to reduce your payments from six eighty-six a month to $212 a month. And she says, anything else I can do to serve you? I said, well, the payment's due on the 5th. I'd like it moved to the 15th. Can you do that? She said, it is done. Yeah. 
And I'm sitting here saying, thinking to myself, am I talking to an angel on this phone? Or what, what's going, what is going on here? But the Spirit of God reminded me. You call this in. And because you prayed it in the Spirit, you had no way to doubt it. You couldn't doubt what you were saying. <laughs> so here I am now from two and a half weeks of praying about this. I said, Lord, praying in the Spirit just saved me $400 a month. <laughs> <laughs> But then I said, what could happen if I, if I started doing this in other areas where I've seen no results? Coming to God is a very important part of our kingdom life. Prayer is a very important part of our kingdom life. But the word of God says, as important as that part of our kingdom life is, we don't know how to do it. Romans 8 says, we don't know how to pray as we ought about anything. And I feel like I have just begun to see this dimension being used more fully in a given area. No other time in the history of a people of God could anybody even do this? God reserved that gift for the segment of the redeemed believers that will usher in the return of the Lord Jesus. And the Lord reminded me that not only could I not doubt what I was saying when I was praying in the spirit about this, the enemy could not hinder it because he didn't know. He didn't know what I was saying. You remember when Daniel was praying in the book of Daniel and when Gabriel got through, he, after 21 days, he said the prince of Persia resisted me. Well, how could understand Daniel's language? When I'm in the spirit, not only do I not know the words, how can't hinder what I'm saying, can't hinder the result of what I'm praying, because it doesn't know. <laughs> So here is what I want you to do. How many of you this morning exercise spiritual language? I want you to do something because I'm going to keep testing this. I want you to take, select an area. Just take one thing. And tell the Lord... Lord, until I see something, I'm just going to pray about this in the spirit. Document it. Don't just pray. Watch and pray. Stay aware of what's happening. And see what happens when you do this. 
I'm going to be bringing to you because now that I've seen this, oh, my God, I said, okay, now I, I've got to test this out some more. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, if it could save me $400, what else could it do? <laughs> what else could it do? And listen, I know answers to prayer. I know what it is to have answers to prayer. I also know what it is to be disappointed. I know what it is to say, I know I prayed about this. And yet I'm not seeing what I know God has for me. Shut off your known language. Go in the spirit. Stay there and watch what happens. I said, Lord, what could happen if I take a season of time and just pray about one segment of this ministry in the spirit? What could happen if I took just one of your promises that I want to see become more of a reality in my life and I just pray over that promise in the spirit until I see something? Let me just wind this down by saying this. I don't know about you, but, I, but in my life, outside of the Lord Jesus Christ being my Lord and Savior, nothing has made the difference in my life that praying in the Holy Spirit has made. I'm eager now to see how I can glorify Jesus by spreading its aim. What if I aim it at this and stay there until I see something? Oh, God. I'm convinced that up till now, while I have incorporated it, it has still largely been underutilized. I've been so comfortable spending most of my life in the limits of the rational that I'm, I've not been comfortable praying beyond my mind. But on this particular instance, I prayed beyond my mind and got a result I couldn't ask or think. <laughs> and I'm convinced there is more where that came from. And I want to test it out. And I want you to test it out and when you get results, I want you to come and share in this house. Come and share your results with us. Because I believe God is assembling a people, an army in the end time, who can march in a way hell has no answer for. We have no doubt for our selfishness cannot get in the way of our unbelief cannot question and we can see results that can come when God answers a prayer we have been praying beyond the limits of what we know how to ask When Jesus said, here, uh, you know, he said, up to now, you, 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 you not ask in my name, ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. There is no joy like answered prayer. When you pray something and then you see that answer, ooh, hoo, hoo. 
People can say they doubt God all they want. I'm not even sure there is a God. Well, let me tell you, I got a whole lot of unexplained coincidences that have been happening in my life. I don't have to debate about God. Answered prayer settles some issues. There's a level of praying and a level of answering that I believe I have yet to tap into the way God's been waiting for me to tap. What about you? <laughs> Final thing I'll say. The Holy Spirit, the Word of God said, by one spirit, we're all baptized into one body. The Holy Spirit places us into the body of Christ. Jesus, after the Holy Spirit places us into the body of Christ, Jesus is the one who baptizes us in the one who placed us into him. John said he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And there's so much of our salvation yet to be entered into, to be experienced. And I'm, and I'm like a calf at a new gate. I'm just tapping into something here. But I'm not hungry. Listen, I'm too hungry to stay at the gate. I got to go into this. And he's redeemed us to experience all he redeemed us to. Look, too often we just know what we saved from. We just know what we, we just know what we don't do no more. <laughs> <laughs> I don't smoke and I don't chew and I don't run with those who do. Well, what do you do? We're not just saved from something. We are saved to something. And moving in the realms of the Holy Spirit given prayer is something we are saved too. Jesus, you're a hero. You're the Lord of the church. You would not have baptized us into something just to stay on the fringe of it. You immersed us into the him who put us into you that we may fully come to experience all he has enabled us to experience in our inheritance. As we celebrate you today, may we fully enter into what you've done. Now, while the brothers come and prepare this table, I was with Chester and Linda Holloman last night with our daughter Erica. She got her master's degree. We were celebrating her master's. Uh, I don't know if she's here. Yeah. 
and, and in this room where all these mothers were, who were senior mothers, one of them came to me last night and said, she said, she said, I want you to know you wrote a little booklet. I don't know if she told you about it later, but she came to me and said, you, you wrote a little booklet that I have been, I'm being blessed by as I read it. And I wrote it for some young people who got baptized in the Holy Spirit. And, and uh, I want to make it available going forward. It's called Every Time I Speak in Tongues. And she said, I'm reading that, and you don't know how it's blessing me today. And I thought to myself, you don't know how much I need to go back and reread that and let it bless me. <laughs> So we want to make this available, but listen, as we celebrate him today, let's celebrate him reaching in our hearts to go into all he's redeemed us to. Not just what he's redeemed us from. And this is one dimension that I believe is going to bring cascades of blessing and divine results into our lives and into this house at a level we've not seen before. Will you stand now? Before we celebrate him, I, I, I want each of you who, on the sound of my voice, I'm sure most of us here, if not practically all of us, are believers, but because there is just the chance that there's one or maybe more among us who's never made Jesus Lord, you're worth us pausing you're worth us stopping. If you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. So right where you stand, I'm not going to ask you to come, but I want you to pray with us. And you can't say this too much. You can't call him Lord too much for those of us who've already done it. But if you do this for the first time and mean it from your heart, you will pass from death to life in the realm of the spirit right where you stand. Say this with me, Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me. I believe you rose from the dead for me. I give you now your place in my life as my Lord and my Savior. And because of what you've done and my faith in you, I have passed from death to life. Now, is there anybody who prayed that today for the first time? Anybody here? You prayed that for the first time. You prayed it for the first time. Well, those of us who prayed it before and you know you passed from death to life, come on, give Jesus glory for what he's done. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come now from, from both sides, take the symbol of his body and his blood back to your seat, and we'll take it together once you have reassembled.
we share the with the mind of it. We share the time let's sing there's healing in the blood there's healing in the blood <laughs> yeah yeah it is yeah it is oh there's healing in the blood of Jesus there's healing in the blood of Wonderful Lord Jesus, you have come bodily to this earth. You suffered. You were bruised for us beaten beyond recognition for us and rose triumphantly over everything that happened on Calvary for us. We declare your triumph and acknowledge your great lordship and declare our faith in your atoning work by eating now this symbol of your body. Let's eat it together. Lord, today as we drink this cup, we drink healing. We drink deliverance. We drink salvation. We drink 
all that your powerful shed blood has done. It covers us. It's our confidence. Today, as those under that covering, we drink now the precious symbol of the blood that covers us. Let's drink it now together. Great! 